All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 13 5000 series. Uh, the exact model is 135379 2-in-1. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, of course, is close it up, make sure it's off. We're gonna use a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom, okay? So just go ahead and take all these screws out. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got basically four down here, three in the middle, and then two at the top uh, near the hinges. Okay. Um, if you want, you can follow the exact pattern and make it in this kind of like a little bit of curved shape. Okay. But as long as you can figure out where you got each screw from, then that should work. All right, if this video helped you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so this uh, laptop is having an issue charging. So we're going to see if we can fix the charging issue. Um, and then also, I think because of the charging issue and it shutting off, it damaged the hard drive. So we're going to see if we can repair the hard drive as well. All right, so now that we got all the screws out, we're going to see if we can pop this bottom cover off. So I'm going to open it up like this. I get my fingernails in the gap here of the cover, and then I push with my thumbs on the palm rest. Okay, and I push on the palm rest. You don't want to push on the trackpad. Okay, so let me see if I can... It's kind of difficult to do this and trying to keep it in view of the camera but let's see here okay so I guess the back part popped up first so when I did that the back part popped up so we're just gonna go along here see if we can pop up more of this okay same thing get in there I just went in with my fingernails and pulled like this pushed with my palm <coughs> okay and then we're gonna go along here and now the front is the only part that's left. So we should be able to kind of lift it up and wiggle it and see if it should pop out. And there we go. Oh, there are strong magnets here that kind of help hold it as well. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to test the charge port because the charge port is right here. Okay. And we have a replacement charge port. So I want to disconnect this. So I just go here, use my fingernails here and kind of just wiggle it. And as you wiggle it, you can see it comes out. Okay, when you get the replacement one, make sure you put it back the right way. You can see if I were to just put this here, it would go upside down. So you want to make sure that you get the connector plugged in the right way with the red wires on the right side and the black wires on the um, other. Well, I, I meant right side as in the correct side, not right as in left and right. But um, yeah, okay. So you want the non-exposed pin side facing up here. You can see if I flip it over, you can see the metal pins. Okay, so we're going to plug this in. Okay, and I'm going to test this outside of the computer without installing it completely yet because to get this out, we either have to break this plastic here or remove this hinge part. And to get this hinge out, we actually have to take the whole motherboard out. So I spoke with the customer. I told him it'd be much easier to just break this little piece of plastic and then we can just fill that with a glue or something and it'll actually be much better. So in the future, you can change this out much easier anytime. Okay, so I don't know why they designed it like this, kind of a dumb design, but let's plug this in. And here I can see um, on the front of the laptop, before the light here was very unstable. Now it doesn't matter how I move it, it stays on, all right? So definitely the charge port was having some problems. Okay, so I'm just going to unplug it now. And then we're gonna see if we can easily replace that by removing the plastic like I said okay so we're gonna pop the charge port back out okay so what we have we have one screw holding up here in the corner so we're gonna remove that screw okay and once we got that screw out you can see if we try and move this it's stuck okay because of this dumb design what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this screw here, okay, <clears throat> and that, I don't think that's going to be in quite enough. Like if I open up the 
thing and then close it a little bit it does pop up a tiny bit but not much so I don't think I'll be able to get the charge cord out from here yeah nope okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna try and break that little plastic wing that's right there um, and to do that let's see if we can use like a small flathead screwdriver or something so I'm gonna just get in there and we're just gonna pop that out so there we go just like this okay this little piece and hopefully that will be enough that we can uh, remove the charge port okay i'm going to use some small needle nose pliers and pull that out so here you can see we got that little piece out and hopefully that's good enough that we can remove the charge port and there you go see so now you can remove the charge port and put a new one in very easily i don't know whose idea was it to make it like this but um yeah all right so now we're going to get the replacement charge port you might have to kind of bend the wire a little so when you hold it it kind of goes at an angle like this okay and then you can use that as a handle oh probably have to bend it more okay then we can use that as a handle to get that in there we go and we don't want to just leave this area open here because if we do um it can move too much wiggle too much to the sides and then that can cause it to um, release. All right, we're gonna get this screw and put that back in. Okay, make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want this screw coming loose. I personally would put the uh, red uh, thread locker. Let's get this screw in. So I'll do that in a bit, okay. All right, so usually also um, it would be better if they put something back here inside behind the charge port so that way it can't slide backwards. All right, um, because you don't want it to get pushed into the laptop. Usually side to side isn't as bad. Anyways, I'm going to use some red thread locker on this one screw here because we don't want that one coming loose. So I have this uh, Loctite 262 thread locker, okay, and it's, it, some people were saying that it's permanent, but it's not really. It comes out pretty easily, um, but it prevents the screw from undoing itself. So I just put a tiny amount, not even a full drop, and then we tighten that into place. Good, and that should prevent it from ever coming loose. Okay, so the old charge port, as you can see, they kind of like have it bend in this way so that it can plug in. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna fill this with some hot glue, and then after that, I'll put the, um, plug the charge port in. Again, right now it's upside down. Let me get the hot glue gun. I'm gonna plug it in, let it sit for a while so that it can warm up, and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and get some hot glue in here. All right, so we're just gonna fill in this gap back here, and this area to the side. Okay, and this is just so it doesn't wobble around. You don't really need to like glue it in place really strong. Okay, hot glue is nice because it doesn't really stick too bad. So if anything, if we ever need to take it out, we can just pry this out, okay? All right, so we'll set the hot glue gun aside. All right, we'll let this set completely because we want it not to be wiggling around. Okay, I might have to add a little bit more up here. Okay, oops. Get a little bit more in here. Okay, because we don't want it to move around. And if you want, you can actually also put the bottom cover on to make sure while it's warm that it's gonna sit properly. Okay, we're gonna plug this in real quick. So again, you just kind of flip this, the wiring over, and then we're gonna plug this in. Oh, I'm getting the label stuck in there. I didn't need to do that. Okay, well, let's move this out of the way real quick, and then we're just gonna test fit the cover here. Okay, because there are some clips on it that you wanna make sure can fit in properly. And looks good, okay? So we're gonna pop the cover back out. Okay. 
Yeah, there is a clip that kind of goes in here, so you do want to make sure to fit it in. Okay, this one clip on the side of the cover. So you want to make sure that that does go in without getting blocked by the glue, okay? So that's good. All right, we'll set that aside. Anyways, we're going to let this completely set. Let me get this stuff off of this label. I need to get glue on it. Oops, I tore the label a tiny bit. But as you can see, the glue kind of comes off really easily. Okay. <clears throat> For the most part. There we go. All right. You can see, now let me go over the other components. I probably should have done these first. Anyways, there's two slots for RAM. Only one is being used. Um, you pop these two tabs to the side and the stick of RAM will come up just like that. Then you can go ahead and pull this out. Here you can see, this is Kingston RAM, eight gigs, PC4 2400T. So any PC4 2400T RAM should work. If you want, you can get two 16 gig sticks if they have it. I'm pretty sure they do, so you can have 32 gigs total. All right, anyways, you saw I just put it back in, and then while you're pushing it in, you click it back down, All right? If you're gonna mess with these, the LCD, LVDS connectors, and the touchscreen digitizer connector, um, you wanna make sure to disconnect the battery first, open up the laptop, and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before messing with these. Otherwise, you could fry the backlight circuit or the screen. So you want to be very careful. Battery connector is here. It's connected in two places. Um, usually I will just disconnect the white one, but in this, for this one, you will have to remove the battery screws to be able to have room to grab this. Okay, so just be careful with that. If you try and pull it here, you'll probably end up damaging the connector here. I'm not going to take it out because we're not doing that type of repair. So I'm going to leave that. Um, then we got the hard drive here. You got the CMOS BIOS battery here. You got this little cable here, which goes down to the power button and volume buttons here. Okay. So if for some reason your power and volume buttons break, this is replaceable. There's looks like just one screw here. Okay. And the SD card slot, as well as the USB port here, connect to this here. There's a little flip latch that you can flip this up. And once you flip that up, then you can pull the cable out. I'm going to leave that attached because we don't need to do anything with that. Okay, and same thing on the motherboard end. You got the fan connector here. This comes out like the charge port DC jack. You just grab this and kind of just wiggle at the wings to pull it out. Two screws there. Wireless card is also attached to this board. Um, so if you want to remove that one screw, it pops up slightly at an angle, then you can pull it out just like the RAM. There are the uh, antennas here. To pull them out, you lift up at the tails after you remove this metal bracket. I'm going to leave that as is. Again, if you want to see how to do that, I have other videos of laptops where I show this. I don't want to do that because sometimes the solder for these are bad and then there's a risk of the antennas ripping off. All right, you got the two and a half inch SATA hard drive that we're going to be replacing. Speakers here, one wire runs along from that speaker to this one and then it plugs into the motherboard here. And then you got all these little connectors um, right there. Uh, since I'm not taking out the battery, I don't know exactly what each one are, uh, is. Actually, let me take the battery out real quick, or at least lift it up. Also, battery model number here is WDX0R. It's a very common Dell model battery. Okay, let's go ahead and actually lift the battery at least so we can see what's underneath. Okay, I think one is for, this is usually keyboard, keyboard backlight. Um, and then this is probably like the trackpad and the little battery light on the front, but let me see which is which. Okay. All right, so we're gonna lift that up and here you can see the thicker one is for the touchpad or trackpad. And then this smaller one is for the battery light there. All right, it's kind of dusty under here. So I'm gonna clean that up real quick and I'll be back. Actually, I might as well take this opportunity to remove the battery if I can. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to lift this up, kind of swing this out of the way a little bit. And then usually I use my fingernails at the edge and kind of use that to help wiggle this. Sometimes it doesn't come out, and then I have to um, use a tool in this area here to help pry the connector out. But uh, let's see. Hmm. 
yeah this connector is stuck in there pretty good let me actually remove it from this side then because usually this side is easier so i'm going to grab the whole connector like this i'm going to kind of just wiggle it and there we go okay so now i can clean the battery out off it's all these like crumbs and stuff on it okay there we go it's a lot cleaner it's still kind of gross but it's a lot cleaner than before then I'm going to also clean this off a little bit. Don't want to do too much on it. Because there's a little risk involved. All right, there we go. We got the battery area a lot more cleaned out. Okay, then we're going to just get this, plug it back in. To, again, take note of which way the pin things are, that the gold pins are facing up. And then just push that back in. Good. I'm going to swing this back over line everything back up and we'll get the screws back in all right next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the two and a half inch sata ssd okay and then we have to install windows on it to select the boot device you do you press f12 which will let you choose the temporary boot device um, and then we'll boot from the thing there. All right, I think I went over everything that's already in here. So, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and replace the hard drive. And I also have to remember to um, to replace the or reconnect the charge port or DC jack. All right. Looks like there's only two screws. The other screw on this side is part of the bottom cover, okay? All right, now that we got those two screws out, we're gonna carefully lift this. You wanna be careful, because I am leaving the connector on that side. I'm gonna use my fingernail in here to pry the um, connector off. Let me zoom in so you guys can see that better, okay? All right, so what I do is I get my fingernail in between here and here, and then I pry it with my thumb like that. You can see it pops out. We're going to go on the other side and do the same thing. And there we go. We got the hard drive out. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here. I didn't even do a, I don't think I got a thumbnail for this one. But there we go. We got the hard drive out. It's actually a pretty slim 2.5 inch SATA hard drive. So keep that in mind. All right. We're going to get the replacement here. Okay. There's four screws holding the hard drive onto this metal bracket. So we're going to take that out. Technically, you don't even really need that um, metal bracket with an SSD, but yeah, it is a it's nice to have it just to kind of prevent any rattling inside the computer. Okay, with an SSD though, because it doesn't get affected by the vibration and shock from shaking around, um, it's not really as big of a deal. Anyways, we got those four screws out. Now we can pop the hard drive out of there. Okay. We're going to get the replacement SSD here and put this on. And then we will get these four screws back in. Okay. And usually what I do or what I like to do is I'll loosely fit the screws first. And then we'll go ahead and tighten them all down afterwards. Okay. There we go. And let's go ahead and tighten them all down. Good. Last two. Okay, perfect. Then we get this. And usually what I'll do to make this the best way is you kind of hold the connector still and then line up this and push the hard drive while just holding the connector. Okay, like this. All right, there we go. Then we'll get this into place again. Get these two screws back in. I am going to have to take a thumbnail for this. So, oops, actually, let me reconnect the charge port or DC jack before I forget, and then we'll do the thumbnail. Okay, so we got the SSD installed. Now we're going to zoom in and get this connector reconnected. Okay, this kind of, this pl uh, label here is a little bit in the way, but, um, yep, it is what it is. Okay, so we're going to kind of have to curve this wire over and then curve it back this then we kind of rotate this piece get that in and pinch it into place there we go 
All right, so there we go. We got the charge port in. So let's go ahead and zoom out, get a thumbnail here. Okay, zoom out a bit more. That's too much. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna get a thumbnail here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. Okay, I think you can kind of see everything from that. The bottom cover has a little dust on it. Let me clean that out. Maybe I should clean this out as well, the fan. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we're just gonna put the bottom cover on. We'll start with the bottom side like this because of those magnets, okay? Make sure to lift it up enough. Let me zoom out a bit. Make sure to lift it up enough that all these clips kind of re-engage and are flush. And then you kind of hold it in place, slowly lower it down, and then clip the sides. Okay, work your way up. And clip it all into place, and there we go. Now we just gotta get all the screws back in and we're good to go. Okay, then I will show you how to kind of boot into the installing mode but other than that that's all there is to this <clears throat> hopefully this video helped you guys out again if it did make sure to like subscribe share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well if it helped you save a bunch of money again please consider contributing a little to the channel every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living other than that you're welcome to stay as i get all these screws in and then we'll do a quick boot to the windows installer i'm not going to show how to do the whole process of installing windows because basically just follow the on-screen prompts um but yeah we'll boot up from the usb drive okay let's get this last screw in there we go and let's go ahead and flip this thing over plug it in Plug it in, plug it in. We'll connect our Windows 10 USB installer here. Okay, now that we got all of that connected, what we do is we'll power it on and we'll press, we'll continuously press F12. So right after powering it on, just keep pressing F12. Okay, just like this. You should see at the top right, preparing one time boot menu there. And here you can see the SanDisk Cruiser fit. We'll press enter. I have two versions of Windows 10 on here, 64 and 32 bit, so I have to select. Usually you don't. And then it will go through the Windows 10 install process. Okay, uh, at least show all the way until the deleting or creating the partition part. Usually I just have it install over the entire drive, so I don't do the partial partition thing. Oh, I'm getting some messages here. Okay, so there we go. Then usually I do this without the mouse, but you can use the mouse. I just press tab three times, enter to go to next, enter to install now. Okay, wait for this to go. Setup is starting. So this can sometimes take a while. Okay, then I press spacebar to accept, enter for next. I press the down arrow to go to custom. Then I press enter. Here you can see it's completely unallocated. I'll press enter for next and then the installation will begin. After that, just create your username, password. I don't like to connect to the internet in the beginning because then it forces you to create a Microsoft account um, or use a Microsoft account. And then, um, yeah, then it's always linked to that email and I don't like to do that. So I'll do this once it's finished. Why is it not focusing? Okay, once it's finished, um, then I just run Windows updates until all the updates are done. And usually that'll get all the drivers, but sometimes it doesn't. You might have to manually get them, but yeah. Anyways, other than that, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this spike.